Hi everybody! Today we will be making flowers and I will even show some of you how to make a three-dimensional ball. Let's go! Today for our art project you will need a black piece of paper, a white piece of paper, this is actually cardstock, makes it a little bit more durable, and you will need some oil pastels such as this. Um, if you do not have these supplies, they are available at the doctor's office. Just swing by and pick them up and we should have plenty of extra. If you have not had a chance to swing by, then please go on by and ask for those supplies. They are free of charge to you and um, we are very grateful to the uh, Charles Henderson Health Center for um, providing these classes and these materials to children in the community for free um, so that um, they can have a chance to um, relax and express themselves and de-stress and um, practice some creative expression. So take advantage of it and go pick up your supplies. Okay, let's start with your white piece of paper. And this is a very simple project. Um, we're going to start with um, making the tops of the flowers and you can use any color that you would like for this. I'm gonna pull out lots of warm colors for mine. And um, we're just gonna make kind of a upside down rainbow. If you'd like, if it's easier for you, you can turn it upside down and do your rainbows that way. But I'm just gonna start this way. You could also do this project with crowns. Okay, now I'm gonna do some cooler colors over here. it up this time. Both warm and cool. Something that's fun about oil pastels is that um, they are a lot thicker and um, brighter than crowns would be. Um, so, um, if you'd like, if you'd like even brighter colors than what you already see here, you can really kind of start to paint with oil pastels. Oil pastels are a great way to practice painting without painting because since they are so thick, you can even blend the colors. So I'll show you an example of that right here. Let's use the yellow and just go right on top of the, the red. And if I lay it down thick enough, it's gonna start to turn to orange. It's like I'm blending right on my paper. So now I've kind of got an orange color and I didn't even put that orange there. I can just make it really thick and bright and bold. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing over here with the red and the blue. I'm gonna blend them by just laying it down really thick. So I'm gonna start to blend together. I might have to put some more blue down there too because I want it a little more purple than that. So let's put down some blue nice and thick right here. And go over the red a little bit more. There you go, it's kind of like painting. Once you get it thick, it's like... Now orange and blue don't blend together very nicely because they are complementary colors. And you know that when you mix complementary colors such as orange and blue, you get a you get brown basically. So I'm I'm gonna not try to blend those. I think that would be very unattractive. So we'll just leave those like that. 
And there you go. So I have two flowers that are kind of colored on like crowns and two flowers that are essentially um, starting to look like they are painted on. And my yellow kind of blends off the page, so I'm going to add another color to this and add a little bit more green to this. And I want it to look nice and blended, so I'll just keep picking up my yellow crayon and my green, um, sorry, oil pastel until I can get it blended the way I want it to look. There we go, that's nice. Let's see enough close. Very nice. Okay, now we're going to add some stems to make it look like a garden. And um, I'm just going to use my green crayon for that. This will be fun to do some blending too. So let's just start with some simple stems on each one and some leaves. Okay, this is where the blending is going to come in. Um, I think this color green is too bright. I want it to look a little more natural. I want it to look more like um, even though this is a fan, uh, um, you know, it's not a realistic picture, but I'm going to make my green a little darker on all of these. And this is where we can practice our blending. Go back over it with the green crayon again. I call them crowns, but they're oil pastels. Go over it with the oil pastel again. Okay, and then I'm going to put some lighter green on my leaves. But they're looking a little bright, so I'm going to blend some colors into there too. I like oil pastels because you're not stuck with the colors that you're given. You can blend them and layer them and make them look a little a little more real. So I'm put a, a little bit of black in each one. Maybe some black around the edges. And then we can go back in here and blend some more. I'm blending with my dark green now. I'll leave a couple light green spots, but I'm blending with my dark green. Isn't that fun? Do you guys feel like you're painting? But with oil pastels instead of real paints, they're a little less messy. So there we go. There are the stems. And you don't get super clean edges with this like you would with markers or watercolors, but that's okay. That's part of, part of the fun of it. And then I want you guys to just add whatever you'd like to make it yours. You can add grass, you can add bugs, you can add clouds or trees or whatever you'd like to make it yours. Okay, so there is option number one. Okay, now I'm going to show you something else cool that you can do with oil pastels that you can't really do um, as easily with um, crayons. Sorry about my phone texting. Okay, for this one, I'm just going to use a black piece of paper. I like black because it gives you a chance to see the contrast of these bright, bright colors. And if I tried to color with crayons on a black piece of paper, um, you know they wouldn't show up very well. They would show up a little bit, but not as well as these oil pastels. So <clears throat> I'm going to start with a cup. And I'm, I'm going to teach you guys how to draw something in three dimensions. And this may be just for older children. Um, those of you who are who want to challenge yourselves, or I'd say maybe ten and ten and up, maybe eight and up, uh, you guys can judge that. But I'm just going to slightly outline this cup here. We're going to do a ball, and we're going to practice some basic shading. Um, I think I learned this either in upper elementary school or in middle school. So. That's the age group we're talking about here. Um, hopefully all, everyone can enjoy this one and this one's a little more advanced. Okay, so um, first I want to decide what color ball I'm gonna do and I'm going to do um, an, an orange ball. 
I'm going to do orange because I have a peach color here and I have orange. You're also going to need a white and a black to practice your darks and your lights. Okay, so the first thing when we're looking at a ball, um, I don't have a ball right here with me, but I have, I have a mango. And you can see that as the light hits the mango, there are highlights on this mango, right, where the, where the light hits it. There are also areas of shadow, um, you know, around the edges where the light is not hitting. So that's what we're going to attempt to show here. Um, I'm going to have you start with, let's pretend that the light source is up here, okay? It can be way up high, um, it could be the sun, but where it hits the ball, I need to put my phone away next time, guys. It's just really busy right now. Usually I don't have that problem. Okay, so we have a highlight on the ball here. Um, that's It never hits right on the edge. It always... Um, Sorry about that, guys. Hopefully you don't hear that. Okay, so it never hits right on the edge. You always have a shadow all the way around the edge. So let's take our um, our black and just trace over this because we're going to need to blend in some black to the edges. Okay. Now let's start with our orange, and we're going to put the main color on our ball. Let's just start coloring right here and right here. Now there is a halfway point here. Your halfway point looks about like this. And from the halfway down, you're gonna start to get even darker. So let's add a little bit more black into our orange. This is like painting with oil pastels. We're blending these colors together. Can you see that? This works on white paper as well. I just think it will look really good on black paper. And if you don't want to try this, then try something else on your black paper. I actually have a challenge for you guys this week. Maybe if you, I'm just going to tell it to you right now. So if you don't want to do the ball, you can start on your challenge. Your challenge this week is to come up with an imaginary animal. Um, I did this when I was your age and it kind of became my imaginary friend for many years. Um, and you know, in fact, if I could draw my imaginary friend, I probably could but it was kind of a mixture of a kangaroo and a, it had wings. So it was kind of like a bird kangaroo that had a nice long fluffy tail and it was like a huge tail. And um, I also pretended that it was pink. So um, I, my challenge is for you guys to think about an imaginary creature and what would it look like? What kinds of, animals have um, features that you like that you could draw on your imaginary creature. There's a book called The Mixed Up Chameleon. I don't know if you guys have read that before, but it's you could look it up on YouTube, I'm sure. But it's about a little uh, chameleon who, of course, he can blend in with his surroundings by changing his colors, but he one day goes to the zoo and he sees all of these other animals that he wishes he could be like. Like he wishes he could see really far, like a giraffe, like be really tall. And um, uh, anyway, he gets all mixed up. And and then he, um, at the end, he just wants to do something to, he's just hungry, he just wants to eat something. But he can't do it anymore because he spent all of his time and energy trying to be something else. And so then at the end, he finally realizes that being himself is the best thing that he could be. Okay, so if you um, followed along just with your eyes, you kind of see what I did. I did, I created a lighter portion up here around the highlight, and then I created a darker portion down here. Now we want to blend these two areas together more because right now it looks like there's a crease in my ball and I don't want it to look like a crease in my ball. I want it to look like it's just gradually blending. So we're gonna just, keep using our oil pastels and blending them together until it looks like a more natural transition. Do you see that? Looks good, huh? Okay, I'm going to put a little more peach around my highlight. I don't want my highlight to be that obvious. Okay, now it's starting to look a little more blended, which is just what we want. 
and it doesn't have to be perfect. This is your first try. Um, one of the things that I've learned about art is you just have to be patient with yourself and just practice, practice, practice. And then with the, mo the more practice that you get, the better you will become. And I don't practice near as much as I, as I should. So that's one thing that's great about being a kid is you can have all the time in the world to practice your art or any other thing that you want to do read or ride bikes or take hikes in nature some things you need your parents to agree to but a lot of things you can do on your own okay so that's kind of what um, we are left with there now if you're a little more advanced I'm going to show you one other thing that you can do let's pretend that this table is on a reflective surface or sorry that this ball is on a reflective surface like a table okay and we'll just pretend that our table is um, we'll just pretend that our table is white okay and that's just going to be the easiest for me to show because we're going to put the color of the table back onto the ball so when you have the light coming down it hits the ball and it also as you might be able to guess it also casts a shadow okay and so you have your white table here let's color all around the shadow from right now okay you can try this if you are really confident in your skills you older kids okay so you you have a, a white table here and you have the shadow um, the shadow is not going to be completely black, actually. It's going to be just a lighter shade of the highlight around it, okay? So you have your line here. Color it really light there. Really light here. So that's where the light's hitting it. And then where the shadow is, you just make it a little bit lighter. Okay, so kind of like that. That's my shadow. Sorry if you couldn't see most of that. But there you go. And then um, we have a little bit of reflection from the shadow, or from the table, back onto the ball. So you'll see just a little bit of white being reflected on the underside of this ball. Just like that. And there you go. And now you have a three-dimensional ball. You can practice this technique with um, more advanced things like maybe you could do the next thing you could do is a mango. And the mango would be a little bit more difficult because you've got green and red and orange and yellow on here, but you also have that highlight and you have areas where it looks darker around the edges. Okay, so you, and then just, it, um, you know, you can see kind of a reflection right here that's being reflected back onto the mango. Okay? So there's, my light source is obviously coming from a different direction in my actual room. It's coming from over here. So I'm trying to move my finger. My light source is coming from here onto the mango. Okay, so there you go. Now the imaginary creature one, that's, that's, um, fun. I'm, I'm not going to do an example of that. I'm going to leave it up to your imaginations. But um, if you'd like to share them with me, you can post them in the comments below. And I hope you guys have a great time playing with your oil pastels. You do not have to return them. And with your black and white paper, I hope you make um, an awesome creation. I'll see you next week.